the noise, dear. I thought I was going to do that. Yes. Laura said, Laura said I was going to do that on Saturday. Yes, yeah, seven weeks ago. Where's my pen? Where's the pen, dear Laura? Where is my pen, dear? Well, what would I be doing with your pen? Well, I had it a minute ago. <sighs> where's my pen? Pardon? 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 Sorry. Something done. Listen, dear, I need it to do this last clue in the crossword. I must have had it earlier to do the rest of it. There are plenty of pens in the box on the sideboard, dear. I knew that, dear, but where's mine? Mine I'm looking for. <laughs> Thank you, dear, but that's not quite the point, you know. Where, where is mine? You know, I shall need it tomorrow, dear. It must be somewhere. It's a plastic one with a black top. Where is it? Where is it? What if I put it in the hall? You sure you haven't touched it, dear, now, are you? Oh. Good Lord. What? Cyril Dawson's coming out of the Weldons. So? Well, he doesn't know the Weldons, dear. He's going to the house next door now. What is he up to? Perhaps he's looking for your pen, dear. <laughs> no, it's not that, dear. No. He's at number 29 now, Mrs. Uh, you know, the lady with the big dog. <laughs> she just opened the door, dear. He's asking her some questions. He's writing things down. He's got a pile of paper in his hands. What is he up to? Perhaps she's telling him where your pen is. Ha, ha, ha. No, no, not that. He's left there now. He's at the house next but one now, dear. What is he, what is he doing? Oh, he's probably canvassing. What? Well, the local elections next week. Cyril canvassing? Hmm. He's not interested in politics, dear. Unless there's a fascist candidate. <laughs> no, he's not interested in politics. Ah, listen, who's talking? What do you mean? Well, who threw all those leaflets in the dustbin this morning without even looking at them? Well, quite right, too. Load of rubbish. Urban District Council. It's nothing to do with us, is it? Is it? It's just local. <laughs> he's, he's coming here now, dear. Well, you can go to the door. Oh, it's just seven weeks last Saturday. You go, Barry Bucknell. <laughs> ah, good evening. I wonder if I might... Uh, not, uh, the, not this evening, thank you very much. Oh, I do hope I'm not uh, troubling you. Um, I uh, wonder if you could give... I, um, I wonder if you could give me some idea of which candidates you'll be voting for on Saturday. Uh, good evening. Yes, you are troubling me, but then you always do. Um, certainly, yes, I shall tell you the candidates I shall be voting for on Saturday. I shall be voting for Stanley Baldwin and Raquel Welsh. <laughs> Don't know. Don't care. <laughs> Is Aunt Lauren? No. <laughs> Should I give you another pamphlet? Yes, by all means, certainly. Yes, by all means. Uh, you really should read it. It might well prove interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm canvassing on behalf of the independent socialist candidate. The what? The independent what? The socialist. Since when? Since when? Why the switch? I mean, you were always so high, Tory, your nose used to bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Only last week you were trying to bring back the birch for jaywalking. Well, at least I'm not apathetic. However, I suppose there's one in every street. Everybody else has been most cooperative. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, and by the way, I shouldn't bother. Next door, that is Cyril Dawson. And he's probably out canvassing. He's very big locally, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Cyril Dawson, a socialist? Stone me. Must be the change of life. <laughs> <laughs> I said you were always so high, Tori, your nose used to bleed. <laughs> Go away! What's the matter? Oh. Well, look, dear. Well, I said I was going to do it. <laughs> oh, come on, never mind. You hurt yourself. Yes. Don't worry. Oh, don't worry. It's your uh, fault. Well, I'll do it, dear. I'll do it. I promise. Promise next Saturday? Yes. Absolute twit. Who? Dawson, dear. Wasting his time in this street, isn't it? Goodness me. Round about here, they're all as blue as a chimpanzee's. Bunny. <laughs> elbow, dear, elbow. Apart from old lefty next door, I can't understand it, dear. Last year, he canvassed for the Conservative Party, you know. What is he up to? Why do you always think that Cyril's up to something? Well, because he is, dear, that's why. 
I mean, because he's not interested in politics. Everybody around here about it is apathetic. Are you going to vote? No, no, you know that. I don't believe in party politics and local elections. You didn't vote in the general election. No, well, there wasn't a Liberal candidate, was there, dear? There was. Well, only old, that fool, old, you know, what's his name, Hinchcliffe. Good evening, Mr Corbett. I hope we can trust in your support in this election. <laughs> like voting for a hamster. <laughs> the Conservative was far too far right. The Socialist was far too far left. I mean, old Gore Fitch <coughs> with two Fs. He's only interested in keeping the neighbourhood nice so the value of his property doesn't drop. And he's absolutely loony, completely loony. Got portraits of himself all over the house. <laughs> Kept going on about how we should never let the Russians cross the Elbe. <laughs> and as for the Labour man, goodness me, that communist ex-road sweeper. <laughs> what do we used to call him? Mao Tse Dung. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he was just interested in upping the wages of the council workers, wasn't he? I mean, they're all off their own ends, dear, feathering their own nests, you know. That's the trouble, you see, I mean... I'm not apathetic, dear. Cynical, perhaps, but not, not apathetic. You see, what really worries me, dear, is... What uh, Cyril's up to. Yes. No! <laughs> Ten minutes late again. I knew it. How's the canvassing going, Cyril? Oh, very well, with the odd exception. <laughs> You're wasting your time. I could have told you that before you started. <laughs> have you canvassed this carriage at all yet? <laughs> He's been out canvassing, you know, for the independent socialist candidate. <laughs> Good evening, I'm canvassing on behalf of the independent socialist candidate. <laughs> You've been wasting your time with this lot. <laughs> You'll be out the window in no time. <laughs> Have a look at them. He's potty. <laughs> he votes Conservative because it makes him feel upper class. His father was a bricklayer. He votes the same way as his wife. He has to. <laughs> and old Dunkley at the end, he thinks the National Health Service is a communist plot. <laughs> he even has his piles done privately. <laughs> Hardly the Michael Foot fan club. <laughs> They're still upset about Mussolini. <laughs> Say what you like about Mussolini. At least he got the damn trains running on time. <laughs> why this sudden political awareness, Cyril? You know, I mean, why the, why the switch? Last year you were canvassing for the Conservative Party and this year you're running up and down the street singing the red flag. <laughs> Did Harold pay you a visit in the night? In a ghostly Gannix? <laughs> and say, why don't you work for me so you know it makes sense, did he? <laughs> or perhaps it was Ted Heath who paid you a visit in the night. <laughs> That'd be enough to put anybody off. <laughs> Mussolini got the trains running on time more than Michael Foote ever did for you. What's he ever done for the trains? <laughs> Michael Foot and Mouth, I call him. <laughs> I'll Sir Gerald, now he'd get the trains running on time. Why doesn't he then? Nothing to do with him. Well, what's it to do with Michael Foot? Not the point, Red Harry. You one of those lefty <laughs> fellas. You, your sort, nationalised the railways. <laughs> and look at that dear old Southern Railway. There was a railway, always on time, spotless. Then nationalisation, <laughs> Michael Foot. Well, what would you do with the railways? Private enterprise. That's the thing. Let the people who know run it, like Sir Gerald. Michael Foot. What does he know about railways? Put Michael Foot in the army and he wouldn't know where he was. Uh, uh, Sir Gerald was in the army. They all were, you know. He, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, there's a man. Uh, the army teaches you how to be a man. None of this namby pamby pie in the sky stuff. <laughs> Pink paraffin, that's what I call it. Well, and Enoch Powell, he, he fought as a private soldier. You can't say he's not bright. You know, I'm sick and tired of people pointing at officers as if they were idiots. I see new sniggering. <laughs> now, if the army was running the trains, then you'd see a thing or two. Now, what do you say to that, eh? I think we ought to pull the communication cord. <laughs> now, Mussolini got the trains running on time. They shot him, hung him up. Typical. <laughs> I know you know, they can't fool me. 
Hello, Jill. Um, is the red peril in there? What? Comrade Cyril, dear. Mr. Dawson? Yes, he's gone pink. Pink? Yes, didn't you know? I mean, at one time, I mean, he was as blue as a chimpanzee's... Well, I shan't bother to tell you about that, but anyway, he's, uh, he's gone red now. Red? You said pink. Well, it's only a matter of time, dear. Can you imagine it? You have to laugh. Mr. Robinson, deep blue, Cyril Dawson, bright red. It's going to clash with the carpet, isn't it? <laughs> Gonna... Oh, hello, Cyril. Oh, by the way, I've been looking for you all morning. Um, there's been a telephone call for you from Peking. And uh, Ho Chi Minh sends his regards to yourself and Mary. <laughs> Have you been trying to get Mr. Robertson in your scarlet embrace? <laughs> ho, ho, Ho Chi Minh. Ho, ho, Ho Chi Minh. <laughs> what about the workers then, eh? Ho, ho, Ho Chi Minh. Death to Imperial's paper tiger. Ho, ho, Ho Chi Minh. Mr. Robertson, revisionist running dog. Ho, ho, Ho Chi Minh. Smash, 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 Mr. Robertson, paper tiger. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Ah, uh, Paul, Mr. Peck, uh, Mr. Tiger, Mr. Robinson, uh, uh, good, good morning, hello. Hello, Paulie. Yes, yeah, good idea. What's all this noise? Uh, well, I was just, I was just ribbing Dawson, you know. I mean, last year, sir, he was an absolutely rabid conservative, and this year he's gone with the Labour Party. He used to be a conservative. Yes, what a face vote. What a vote face. <laughs> really? Last year, last year a conservative. This year, sir, he's canvassing for the socialist. Can you imagine anything as stupid as that? I'm a socialist, Corbett. Of course you are, sir. I'm a socialist, Corbett. 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 Oh, the mind really boggles, you know. Six. Absolutely boggles. Seven. Cyril Dawson, a socialist. <laughs> Oh, you could have knocked me over with a feather. As a matter of fact, I think somebody did. <laughs> no, no, the mind really boggles. Hey, I wish you'd stop boggling, dear. <laughs> but it does, it boggles. Nine. Absolutely boggles. Ten. <laughs> really? Well, it's as clear as crystal. Cyril Dawson, dear, has the integrity of an eel. An eel? All slippery and slimy, you know what I mean? Absolute heap he is. A real heap. Heap, 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 heap. <laughs> You'd do absolutely anything just to impress the boss, you know. Change your politics, dear. Well, I mean, goodness me, if all of us did that, change politics. Well, you said it didn't matter this morning. What? Local party politics. Well, it doesn't to that extent, dear, but when it's as local as next door, the mind boggles. Eleven. What? You have said boggle eleven times. Well, I'll say it again. Boggle, boggle, boggle. Fourteen. Oh, he really does plumb the depths now and again, sir. You know, he really does. He, honestly, he'll do anything to get that little bit ahead, you know. What a philosophy of life, dear. What a, what a code, really. What a code to live by, I say to myself. I say to myself, what a code to live by, really. <laughs> And I don't pay any attention to myself when I say it. That's the awful thing. <laughs> Cyril Dawson, Cyril Dawson makes me vomit. Oh, shut up. Listen, Laura, I want you to listen no, to this. No, dear, no, dear, you listen. You've been going on and on about Cyril and putting the worst possible construction. I mean, well, it's you... hardly surprising, dear, is it? But I don't mean just now, dear, and I don't mean for the past half hour. I mean for the past 15 years. <laughs> past 15 years? The past 15 years. And you always, as I was going to say, you always put the worst possible construction on everything that he does. Well, quite right, too. It is not quite right, too. You're every bit as bad. I think Cyril's rather sweet. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Am I in my own home? <laughs> yes, this is number 16. This is my carpet. This is my wife. Or so I had thought. Oh, don't be silly, dear. You know exactly what I meant. You both of you behave like children. I mean, even if Cyril is as bad as you make out, there's no need for you to try and play him at his own game. I don't like you scheming against your neighbour. Scheming? Yes, scheming. Scheming, not scheming, dear. Just self-defence against Machiavelli next door, that's all. It's hardly the mark of integrity, is it, dear, changing your spots midstream? Goodness me, one minute blue, one minute red. It hasn't occurred to you that Cyril might be sincere? No, it hasn't, no. Well, I have been talking to Mary, and for your information, Cyril is very concerned about that block of flats they're planning to build. 
He's what? Well, that's why he's changed sides, dear. I mean, the present council are putting up those flats without proper facilities for the people who are going to live in them. That's why he's supporting the independent socialist. He's conned you as well. <laughs> no, dear, no, no, don't scoff. I think Cyril shows a great deal of compassion. Compassion? <laughs> Listen, yeah, I want to assure you that none of my attitudes towards Sill are personal in any way. Oh. It's just that he's a vicious swine. <laughs> and I'd like to assure you that Cyril Dawson doesn't give a tinker's thing for anybody, unless they happen to be called Cyril Dawson. Well, whether he cares or not, at least he's doing something about it, which is more than can be said for some people. Oh, I'm getting some stick tonight, aren't I? Oh, dear. <laughs> well, tell me, what does he do? What does he actually do, apart from ask a few questions and fill up a few forms? Making speeches. Making what? Cyril is speaking tonight at the town hall. He's what? Cyril is speaking tonight at the town hall, and I think it's rather splendid. Dawson speaking? Yes. No, 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 no. He is? Never, 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 never. He is? No, he's told you he is. He's probably making the tea. <laughs> Cyril Dawson speaking? He is. I'll believe that when I see it. All right, then why don't we go tonight? Where? Oh, it's like talking to a dishcloth. <laughs> Cyril. Cyril, you know Cyril? Cyril is speaking tonight at the town hall. You just said that. <laughs> oh, well, we'll go then. I feel like a laugh, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. <laughs> yes, I'd like to ask a few pointed questions from the floor. We are not going unless you promise to behave yourself. Silence, women. You know what I mean. I shan't say anything at all unless Cyril says something silly, which he will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. <laughs> Pompous thing. <laughs> it's a, a very kind of surprise to many of you to see me standing here. True. <laughs> However, there's an ordinary red pair with the interest of the community as a hell at heart. Get on with it! Uh, I feel, as no doubt to many of you, that it is in the interests of every man, and every woman, every child. Every budgie. <laughs> indeed, even every pet. Oh, smooth, smooth. That will become the community forced to live under the threats of impending doom that will surely be if... And I say again, if you tell them, Winnie, <laughs> we shall fight them on the beaches. We shall fight them. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I refer, of course, uh, to the proposed high-rise block of flats on the Parkwood Estate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, these represent a threat. What about the people who got nowhere to live, then, mate? Those are the very people I am thinking of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This is all nonsense we've heard before, all hot air rabbit we've heard so many times before, we're tired of it. I mean, how can you say with any, any, any conviction whatsoever, yes, I'm going to use that word conviction, don't bother me, dear, that you're going to do any better than the last lot, that's what I want to know, all self-opinionated, self-centred, don't you look like that, madam, I know what you're thinking, now don't you carry on. Listen, why don't you wheel on that, don't interrupt me, dear, why don't you wheel on the windbag, let's have a good look at him then. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I do apologise for this, I'm Call for, uh, I'll call for. You're lost. And call for what? You're I'm lost. Certainly not. I'm not lost. The um, the, I will introduce the, the independent um, what? You're a dependent windbag. <laughs> I wasn't knocking socialism as such, but as you know, I have no time for party politics and local government. Really? <laughs> oh no, 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 absolute waste of time here tonight. Goodness me, we've been bored, silly. Oh, well, 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 well. Terrible, you know. <laughs> He's about to introduce some other pompous non-entity. We're going home, we're not going to wait. <laughs> and so, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you your independent socialist candidate, Arthur Robinson. Thank you. And now, first, may I... <laughs> I really think we should have rung Dr. Clark, dear. No, we 
It's all right, dear. Thank you very much, by the way, for bringing me home, Mr. Robertson. You really ought not to have bothered, you know. Well, you had rather a nasty knock. Yes, Ronnie, what happened? Um, I think it was the heat from the hall or something like that. Or I slipped on something. I don't know what... Ooh. Oh, dear, I wish you'd let me put something on it, dear. No, it's all right. As a matter of fact, I was rather surprised to find that you were the candidate, sir. As a matter of yes, so I saw. You know, you really shouldn't have worried about anything you said, Ronnie. Uh, I mean, uh, I quite agree about some of the local bigwigs. That's why I was hoping to make uh, my small contribution. You really shouldn't have worried about anything at all. No, it wasn't that, really, it wasn't. No, of course not. Yeah. Though I must say, I suppose you were surprised, really. Literally floored you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, just that I wanted to ask a rather pertinent question, you know, from the floor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're really true brew, are you, Ronnie? No, not really, not that, no. Oh, no, you, you can rely on Ronnie to support the firm, sir. You're a socialist, aren't you, Ronnie? Uh, no, no, particularly. You'd support your own boss, wouldn't you? What's that got to do with it? This is real politics, not office politics. Quite right. Dawson, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have checked my information. I understand that last year you supported the Conservative candidate. This year, not because I'm involved particularly, uh, well, perish the thought, uh, you decided uh, a radical change would be necessary. Well, uh, I admire integrity, Dawson. I advise you to try it sometime. Good night, Laura. <laughs> Ronnie, don't rush in too, uh, too early tomorrow morning, will you? Uh, I swear to you, sir, I swear to you, my motives are purely unselfish, huh? Good night, Laura. Good night, Ronnie. Thank you very much. Good night, Laura. Good night, My motives are purely unselfish, sir. Absolutely, purely unselfish. My motives, I assure you, are purely unselfish. Poor Uncyril. <laughs> oh, dear. Really? Fancy going to see that Australian Prime Minister. Oh, dear. Well, Uncyril, those lengths to get one up on you with the boss, really. You were quite right there, I had no idea. Oh, he's really in it now, you know. I, <laughs> poor Sil, I ought not to have dropped him in it like that over last year. Well, Mr Robinson would have found out anyway. Yes, probably, but I ought not to have dropped him in it just the same. Why, he deserves it, bloody Dawson. <laughs> I think he's rather sweet. LAUGHTER